Let's get it started. But the mission will not be compromised. There will be no comp. The mission will not be compromised. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, whenever this makes it to you. Um, this is the Was It Good Though podcast, the podcast about movies and TV shows. I am joined here with my sister, Jazz. Jazz, how are you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm, uh, you know, on my correct timeline. Not messing up nobody else's. Uh, I mean, if you do, please just don't don't bomb the other ones. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. to all the lives lost in this episode because it was insane. Man, you think you think you think they think uh, Liza was on Thanos time, or like she, she on Kang time? Who, who you think? She definitely is on Thanos' time, but what is time? I mean, she in the TVA, so Tom is, well, well, no, but I mean, she, Liza definitely gives that energy off. If I was deciding between Kang or Thanos, definitely Thanos, because she was trying to kick too many people through the moon door, so. Man, but at the same time, that's what, that's what Kang does as well. He does nothing but destroy timelines. We found that out in Ant-Man Quantumanium. That's, you know, that's all he do is go back and blow them all up. That's true. But not who uh he who remains. He who remains he is chill. He's the chill version. <laughs> um, but I'm Jason. Um, I forget, I failed to introduce myself. Um, and if you haven't figured out, man, we are discussing Loki, episode two, breaking Brad. <laughs> uh, I like to play on words. Um this is literally a live reaction. We literally watched it once, just jumped into it. Um, so this will be spoilers. So pause this if you don't want to, um, want to listen to it, but please like, share, subscribe, eat with your people. But man, we kind of already jumped into it, man. That's what, what you thinking over there. First and foremost, I get that the title of this is Breaking Brad, but I didn't think Brad was going to read the hell out of our main characters. Cause damn. He went in, and for this to be a character that we just met last week, why? I, I'm just sitting here like, why did you have to read Loki the way that you did? And, <laughs> and I know we're going to be pretty much jumping around in this whole thing, but mm-hmm. that scene stood out to me the most from this episode. Easily. Because I was expecting a different reaction and what I got from when he was saying all those things to Loki he was just like you trying to be a hero but you a villain you know basically stick to what you're good at you know he was just like it's um he said you're the problem he was like for Morbius for B15 for your mother now when he dropped mama mama yeah I said yeah. oh shit I knew Loki was gonna kill him. I knew that was it. I swear, I was waiting for Loki to do it because I would have just been like, "You would not have been in the wrong." And I love that they gave us a close up of his reaction because he took that deep breath. <laughs> I was like, "I need you to put hands on him, Loki." Like, <laughs> I get that you're trying to be good, but no, nah, I, I want that old Loki back for this scene. Like, what did you think about this scene, Jason? Uh, that's what I was like but then you know what made me really what I really started beginning to think about is the last season like Loki went through so many different things like just like reliving his mama died reliving his father dying reliving him dying all those things I feel like began to turn him in a different way um but then you know lo- falling in love losing love and losing time literally like I feel like all these things play into who loki is today so i really was like i love that they're uh, well more mobius has always been a main character but i love that they're going deeper into his character so i do feel like at the end like either we're gonna get a send-off where he either gonna die or he's gonna go back home like because they they really did they really dug into him this this episode could you stop trying to kill him off? <laughs> this is week two where you keep trying to kill off Mobius. It's giving me it's giving me Glenn vibes from Walking Dead. I know you, I know that that's not your favorite. I know it's not your favorite, but I'm just saying, like they flirted with his death so much, and they just they, you know, they 
make you fall in love with the characters. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna rip our hearts. Like, what what else can happen? Who do you think if that were to happen at the end of this series, whose death would hit harder the most? Our good sis that was in Secret Invasion dying in the first episode, or Morbius. Mobius, excuse me. Let me say his name right. Truthfully, I think truthfully, I think it'd be Mobius. I think his character, well, not that Maria Hill wasn't a likable person. She was good whenever she was on the screen, but Mobius, I think, is a fan favorite from this show. Like people love Loki. I know for a fact people love Loki, but I think Mobius is a fan favorite from the show. Outside of Casey, of course. I know people like Casey for some reason, which we they got they... we got more Casey and then we got Casey and OB. I said the same exact thing and he was standing. <laughs> I was so excited for them because when we got Casey in this episode, I said, Well, first we got more OB. And OB, like this scene triggered me professionally, and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> but when we saw Obi and Casey in the scene together, I was standing because I was just like, I enjoy these two characters. I actually love all the characters that Loki has, the reoccurring e characters that we've been seeing. Easily. Also, like with B-15, like I love seeing them on the screen and they become regulars. So it doesn't even seem like they're just regular, uh, like special or additional characters. Like they're a part of the storyline. And so, and they're helping carry it. So I'm, I'm loving that we're getting more of them in the scenes and the fact that they're in scenes where you don't even have Mo uh, Mobius or Loki in them mm -hmm. to where they're in scenes with them and other people. So I definitely love seeing that with them. But now nah, when Casey was just like, can you sign my book? <laughs> and Obi was like, yes. He said, sign it by your picture and beat 15. He's like, wait a minute, bitch. Like you just told me we about to die. So you over here standing out. She was like, wait, time out y'all time out. What's the severity of this situation? He was like, oh, yeah, so we can't handle all these timelines because everything, like, the door can't open. And since Miss Menace is the feds, officially, I was right when I said that, Jason. I mean, we kind of, I mean whenever she did her jump scare in the last episode, <laughs> last season, I figured she was on the, she was on the, she was on the dark side then. But she always felt like her voice don't, her voice gives the, the gives depth. Like, we talked about the Candyman voice in Final Destination, but she definitely give that type of vibe off. Like, I wouldn't want her to talk to me. So if she just said, good morning, Jason, how are you doing today? You would think she's suspicious as if she really don't care? I would. I don't know about any of that. I just know <laughs> I, I would feel a way about her saying good morning to me. Like, I'd just be like, hmm, kind of shivering me timbers or something. <laughs> what? And she said, Jason, you have a virus on your computer. Are you going to be like, nah, this bitch lying? You know, I pro I'm going to probably take a word. I, I, I didn't say I wasn't gonna listen to her. I just said she a scare me. You know, like that Candyman. He may have the most be the most knowledgeable person in the world, but just his delivery is just scary. Now I get that because R.I.P. to the late great DMX. His delivery seems like it would be hella aggressive. So if he hit me, it was like, "Hey, yo, Jazz, well, good morning." I'm be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I ain't woke up all the way yet. Like, send me a text. You ain't gotta. I don't need no don't, don't call me with that voice in the morning, like." Yeah, let me have but, breakfast first. Uh, but that's my voice. <laughs> you know, then I would think he's really attacking me. And I would be like, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nah, like when we saw, when uh, Loki and Mobius went to go ask OB about the uh, temp pad that they got from X5. Mm -hmm. uh, OB was like, they was like, can you take a look at this? And he said, um, is this more important than what I'm already doing? Because you see, I'm already doing something that's highly important. That's a high priority. <laughs> so does this take precedent over that? And they was just like, oh, you hit, you see it now. It's coming together. And so <laughs> they was just like, no, nah, it doesn't take priority. He was like, oh, okay. Here go my book. Go read this shit yourself and holler at me later so I can get back to what the priority task is that's in front of me. Mm -hmm. I saw that scene. I said, oh, Lord, this is. This show was speaking to me this week. It was Jason, triggering right? you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't do it. I'm telling you, I didn't not... do it. <laughs> but that just means it was good writing because I was just like, mm. okay. It was. It was. We think about the intro scene. I I love how they they finally we got. Well, I feel like Loki has been using this pop. Well, episode the the episode before the end last season. I think that's the one where the Lokis was using their powers, but. 
I enjoyed how they were how he used his and here it was like it brought me back to almost Thor or maybe even no Avengers. I'm, I'm gonna go to Avengers. It made me think about Avengers. I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen Loki. I thought he was gonna be in his suit when you seen the oh, devil yeah. horns on the wall. Did that make you think of Ghost the movie? Do you remember, you remember that Ghost? I do, and I remember like the the uh, the creatures and stuff. You could see their shadow. The shadows and they, they made grab you. Creepy yeah. ass noise. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, we don't need audio for y'all. <laughs> Just give us the shadow. But no, I completely agree with you. Like when us seeing that chase scene and Loki using his powers, because I'm not going to lie, like I've been forgetting he got powers because exactly. he can't use them in the TVA. So him, no, nah, he can't use them. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think he can. I don't think I don't... he can. I don't think he can, now that you say it. Yeah, I don't think he can use him there. So I was just like, because he's always been there. And it's just, it was a delight to see him using his powers. And it's just like, he probably just, I ain't been in battle in a minute. <laughs> so he's just like, you know, let me let me uh do some different tricks that I haven't been able to use on anybody. But I love the powers and I love the <laughs> fact that I thought uh, X5 was about to get jumped by some street folks, but it was yeah. low yeah, I so, did too. I was like, yeah, they could have beat his ass. What did he do? I guess I didn't like his movie. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that movie, would you, was that something that you would be interested in seeing? I know Moby is saying it looks kind of scary when he's saying it, but did that look like something that you would, you know, go see? No, because, and I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't trust Mobius either because he's been in the TVA for years and has no memory of anything. So I think the slightest thing would have him extremely interested. So... Nah, I, I wasn't sold off on the art for it. I mean, is that something that you would try to go see? Probably not. Probably not. I just want—I just had it in my notes to ask you if you was going. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I don't even want to see the trailer. I'm good. I'm good on that whole thing. Um, so opening this scene up, did you kind of feel like you was rushed into? Like you just like you just, like kind of like they they it starts they get, it come through the um whatever that the door the door. The doorway like it's like i was like man what what the fuck is going on? i'm like i was confused i was super confused i was like man what's going on and i, I didn't know who brad was at first me either <laughs> they didn't tell you but we saw that he got demoted so now they calling him by his first name but i think it's because from where we got at the last episode of season one to the episode first episode of season two it was no time pass it was a mm -hmm. continuation episode. We don't know how much time went past from season, or excuse me, episode one of this season to episode two. Because I'm just like, last time we saw Brad, he was going off on a mission and we didn't know where they were going. But now we see he got a whole life on a secret time. Uh, the whole, secret yeah. time. I'm like, wait, how long has he been down here? So, I mean, because we know that everything, like the time goes differently in the TVA. So 30 minutes and the TVA could have been three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but now <clears throat> it it seems I'm curious how much time went past. But because then I mean hell, um, Liza got a whole squad <laughs> destroying shit. I'm like, how long did it take y'all to do this, bro? So, they had been working like they had been like they had they that was like a contingency plan that was already set. Like Liza brought Game of Thrones energy into this episode big what, what's it the what's it battle of the set what is that episode called uh which one the one with uh when, when my girl my girl blew up the church oh um cersei when she <clears throat> blew up the septon yeah whatever whatever that episode whatever that episode was this is the energy that liza was on like she didn't get to do this over there but she she finally get to do it she get to do it here um uh, but we get you know we, we're gonna we're gonna say that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say that say that scene uh for the end man but um i think you kind of touched on it but loki didn't get shake get didn't get shaken but mobius did how did you feel about mobius being shaken to the core i think what brad was saying as an audience or as a viewer of the series kind of questions that we could have Mm -hmm. watching it to where it's just like okay when you know that everything is fake and you know that you were taken from your timeline but you don't want to go back and see what life you had you just want to stay up here and continue living in this lie and so it's just like morbius why you were always talking about jet skis 
you have the opportunity to actually go to a timeline and get on a jet ski. All, so some of the stuff that you were interested in doing, you actually can do that because the timekeepers aren't real and you have free will and him deciding not to do that and him just deciding like, no, the TVA is all I know. It's kind of like kind of sad in a way. And I'm glad we were able to explore that more at the end of this episode when him and Brad were talking to McDonald's. Because he's just like, it's not the fact of him going to see it and it might be bad. It's the fact that if he goes see it, then it's good. And he just going to have that in his mind. That's so a, that was actually deep. Like that was, I ain't going to say it was a bar, but that was deep. Like, what, what would you do if you had, if you, if you, if you was in a TVA and you had the option? I mean, you got free will. I mean, for me and how my curiosity is, I would definitely go check it out. Mm -hmm. It's, I feel like, it's safer to stay where you are because this is what I'm used to. This is what I know. I'm comfortable here. Or you go figure out what I could have had, what I could possibly still have. So it's like you're taking a chance. And plus, hell, if you kind of think about it, Morbius, if you go down there, Mobius, keep fucking up his name. Mobius, if you go down there... I keep thinking, I want to say Morpheus, and I'm just like, nah, that's Matrix. But <laughs> I keep it's saying like, Morbius. <laughs> they know who we're talking about, though. Vampires. It's like if you <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you go down there and see your life on a timeline or try to start a life on a timeline, if it don't work out, just go back to the TBA. Prune them. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going that far. I mean, you just pruning people like you know my you know my rule in the clones. I gotta get him out of here. <laughs> Imagine going down there, pruning your clone, living that life for six months to be like, yo, this bullshit, and then leaving. That's crazy. Like what? That'd be a nice job though. Imagine working for the TVA. Like you can be like, <clears throat> I don't know though. That'd be kind of crazy. If you have if you have a wife and whatnot, like just imagine you go to work, work, work a little eight hours shift. <laughs> You come home. She old as hell. You be like, damn. <laughs> yeah, you can't commit to nothing. You can't have no pets either because you ain't trying to deal with them dying either. Nah, <laughs> that's that's the kind of job you just don't get attached. Yeah. I would definitely do that job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Nah, that's for real though. Because that seems like you get a lot of travel in. And you know I love to travel. Hey, nah, I be, I'm right there with you. I definitely be on it. But what would you do? Oh yeah, I'm if, I'm uh I'm if you curio like, curiosity would, curiosity would kill the cat. I would I would be out there. I would I would definitely be seeing what you know what I'm doing. Or what or I would actually try to try to jet ski. Like I'm I'm just reading a book about it. It's kind of funny. Well, I like that that, that call back, you know, he mentions it and he like shit, I'm living my life. Like, you know, because he probably know what a jet ski. Well, maybe he might. I don't know if jet skis are a thing in the 70s. But then again, he be moving. I know he be moving around. He ain't just in the seventies kicking it. That seems like a missed opportunity. Like if he says something about jet skis, that literally would like during that whole read that he was giving Mobius. If he'd have been like, you don't even know what a jet ski feel like. You out here reading about it, and I'm out here doing it. <laughs> that would have been a bar. Oh my god! Then I would have just been like, if, and I would have panned to B fifteen and Loki looking at Mobius. And that would have had Mobius start going in on David. No, that's not his name. Brad. Brad. <clears throat> Brad. That's wild. That's wild. Nah, man. Um, we get a Shatari invasion callback. Um, you know, when Loki said he was, this is Avengers. When he said he tried to put the time, uh, the mind stone on Tony, I think. I yeah. think it's the time stone. Yeah, time stone. And he said it didn't work. Or the Mind Stone. He tried to use the Mind Stone on Tony. Yeah. It didn't work. So we threw him off the building. <laughs> he was like, yeah, but we can't be like that. We, we can't be like that. I mean, but you can see the growth in his character. Because he was just like, you can't let your emotions kind of like dictate your decisions or have you go over the edge just because somebody pushes your buttons. And so you see, a, that's a lot of growth within Loki, because I'm not gonna lie, I would like you say all the time, hands and feet on Brad. Like, as soon as he said your mama name out loud, well, he didn't say your, her name, but he said your mama, who is out of the, like, she's gone. She's dead. 
And he knows this because he knows everything that you went through. And he felt the need to say all of that. I Brad deserved a lot more than a smack. And I just know that smack wasn't as hard as it should have been. But I yeah. also know, I know Disney's not going <clears> to <throat> give us the kind of violence that we need. But they dropped a lot of shit and ass bombs in this episode. I'm not going to lie. They, they did. I was like, okay. Shout out mm. to to them for that. <laughs> but um, how did you, because we got two references of Renslayer in this episode. Because mm-hmm. at the beginning, Casey finds out that Miss Minutes was the last one to send her that text that you up text before she wiped her whole system. And so now we see Miss Minutes obviously can't, well, we already knew Miss Minutes couldn't be trusted, but now they see why she couldn't be trusted because they were just like, <laughs> oh, we thought she just went dark. First off, your AI shouldn't go dark, but obviously they haven't seen our robot or Terminator. But Yeah, uh, yeah probably not. Probably not. So, uh, they can pop and, up. I mean, I say literally. I mean, they they can literally pop up anywhere. So, and you know, it, it ain't no telling if one of them people from the movies work in the TVA. Ain't no telling now, since the Brad can be a celebrity in his timeline. Did nobody go look for him? Well, I <laughs> guess uh, Liza had too much stuff on her plate to go look for her for a little Robin. Yeah, nah, he was he was out. He, he said he was done with that. He was done with it. <clears throat> he was like all this is fake like we don't have to live by those rules anymore everything that they told us was fake so like he looked he looked at b15 he's like you even said it yourself and she couldn't say nothing she was like oh i mean shit he right it's just like all of this is fake just go live your life on the timeline and be happy but i appreciated this scene with when uh mobius and loki was talking did this scene remind you of a movie? Which who which who was talking? Uh, after Mobius smacked Brad, and they was just like, you know what? I need some pie. You know what that's from? Mm-mm. Ooh, Men in Black. Okay. When okay. Jay and Him and Jay and Dan K. Okay. K was like, let's go get some pie. <laughs> so I immediately thought of Men in Black in that scene, and I was just like, well, between these two. Who's Agent J and who's Agent K to you, Jason? Hmm. Mobius is definitely K. <clears throat> I think I think Loki would be J because it's the whole thing of Ted, he literally doesn't have family anymore, but he's uh trying to become a better person than what he was. Not that I think, think he, I think he was a bad person, but yeah. Yeah. Do you think after that smack though, it kind of seems like they kind of traded places? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I just think Mobius hasn't really been challenged. Like, I don't think Mobius has really seen anybody or dealt with anybody outside of like Loki, because that's like the first well Renslayer was somebody he 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 had an affection for. But now I think he has one for Loki. Um, his relationship because you can kind of see in the last episode he was like willing to risk his life to ensure that Loki got back. So, you think it's like a brotherhood or something? I think it's else. like brotherhood. I think it's like brotherhood. I don't think it's. I don't think it's beyond that. Um, I still think uh, Moby is when this leaked back from Renslayer. Like I think he was really into her, and like they kind of, kind of. I think it's like she got over, but I'm about to say something like he want his lick back. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, nah, I thought that was uh. I thought that was cool, like, when they were getting pie. Like, do you like key lime pie? I do not. I was going to ask you that. <clears throat> I do not like key lime pie. I do like lemon meringue, though. But I don't like key lime. Both of them shits would have been in that container. And I'd have been like, y'all got some apple? Y'all got some <laughs> potato pie? Hell, I'll take pumpkin pie over uh, key lime pie. Well, we do got we, we do get apple pie, but not before we, we meet back up with bread. Um, now, of course, I I felt like this was this was scripted. I didn't think it was going to be, yeah, um, uh, I didn't think it was going to be nothing too crazy. But I do like how they finally got. Him. I was wondering what that machine did. I think they did that to Loki in the first season, right? Uh, Mobius did that to him. Uh, Put him in it. 
Was it a cube? It, I feel like you put him inside that little cube and started to close it up on him. I didn't know what that machine was. And I was curious because I was like, okay, are y'all going to have him in the same kind of, I guess, prison that you had Loki in? Because when Sith kept coming and kicking him in the balls to where Loki was like, all right, y'all can get me out of here. I'm, I'm broke. I'm good. But they just had him in a room with a little table. So I thought that was kind of strange. But yeah, this scene, I was immediately like, okay, Mobius is probably supposed to be outside to make it seem like this is something more serious than what it is. Mm-hmm. So that didn't really shock me too much, but especially when he, you know, he was at the at the actual door because I'm, I'm I'm looking at X five like I know he know if you know you can get in from the outside because why would you only be able to lock it from the inside? Anything can happen. That's true, because. Yeah, when y'all leave him in there, it's not like somebody has to stay in there with him for it to be locked. I didn't <laughs> think of it like that. Yeah, that's not, that shit. yeah, I'm like, come on now. But at the same time, <clears throat> when you know the severity of this machine, your brain is just like, nah, I'm not even thinking about that. I don't want to get you. I know you don't know what to do with this machine. Yeah. He was like, you ain't got the controller. Loki was like, ha, catch a bitch. It was in my back pocket. <laughs> no, I thought that machine was cool, and then he was just like, "I know where Sylvie is." Boom, boom, boom. Right. I was looking at the time of the episode, and I was just like, "Oh, we got twenty five more minutes." Okay, Bruh. let's go, let's go. Because I thought I was going to cut short. I'm like, "No, nah, I need more than this." But we finally go to Sylvia's. How did you feel about the reunion of Sylvie and Loki? Because I'm not going to lie, when I looked at it. And just to see that shot, well, I'll tell you what I thought. What What did you think of it, Jason? Also, before, do you think it? Do you think we got to her too soon? No, I think it was a. Re- I didn't think it felt any kind of rush. I was thinking mm-hmm. like about time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first first episode was him trying not to die. So I mean, I yeah, but it's only six episodes, so we don't have time to just. Let things marinate. You're right. You're right. Because we still got to get the Kang and we still got to get the Renslayer. So, yeah, Sylvie. We got a lot of people to catch up with. Exactly. Bring your ass in episode two, Sylvie. I hear what I I like. But I like I liked it, though, man. That tension. The the tension the entire episode was thick, truthfully. But this one right here was like the icing on the cake. It was just like, man. And why is he apologizing? I don't know. I do not know because I don't remember him doing anything wrong. Maybe it's because he didn't side with her when it came to killing he who remains and he didn't go with her. Like because that's why he she had reasons to why he didn't do it. Now I guess maybe at the time I was just like, okay, now that she done killed he who remains, everything about to fuck up tomorrow. That's that's what I was expect I was expecting chaos like the next day. And nah, it takes a while. <laughs> and obviously, as we can see, like chaos hasn't fully happened yet. Yet. But she probably just thinking like he was lying. I got a job. I'm out here doing what I want. I'm happy. I got a truck. Where'd she get an ID? Where'd she get a license? Bruh, like, see, look, look, look. I know. You know, when the last time we seen her, there's no telling how long she was out there. Remember TVA time? Different from her time. This is true. She was out there Ama- for a while. But uh, imagine imagine being able to go to 3035 but what you settle with is working at McDonald's in 1980 but I guess when you've been on the run for so long peace you, peace of mind peace in Oklahoma at that I'm like silly what the fuck is this ain't no way cause hey look if that was if she was black Oklahoma would not be where she ended up at Nah. but she just it's just that peace and who's actually going to find her out there well we see a couple of people were able to find her but she was just like I don't want to I just want a regular life to where I'm not doing too much and homegirls out here filling up the straw box before even being asked to do it she's probably the employee of the month three times back to <laughs> back like Sylvie out here just McDonald's best worker type of vibes. 
And when Loki came in, I'm not going to lie. It was really giving off the, I cheated. I want you back. I'm sorry. And you show up at her job. And she's just like, uh, so what you want? Because this, is you going to order something? He was just like, I just want to talk. My break in five minutes, like whatever. And he just walked off. I was just like, Cause, it, I, cause it's like, I gotta, I gotta wait. I need yeah. the information I need. What can I do? Mobius over there getting, he got a, he got a chicken sandwich, a whole French fry, apple pie, milkshake. Then McDonald's apple pies is kind of fire. They I remember are. they used to be two for a dollar. Not anymore, Jason. You know what? The McDonald's, the, you know, do you remember the cinnamon? Yes. Oh my God. When Ooh. I was in high school, like my dad he used to just like just you hey, I, I brought some food to the to the uh to the whatever the, the office. You can go up, you go up there and pick it up, bro. Send me broke me up and said, I said, What what is this? He dropped you what out is- food. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cinnamon. I was like, man, what is this? Lord, I see the blessings that you put on <laughs> the others. Because my parents ain't never drop off no food for us. Like if I left my lunch at the house, they'd be like I was in high school though. So even then. So look, so then like when I was in high school, I used to have I used to, I used to have like some little fly moments in my pen. They used to do like some little fly stuff every now and again. Every now and again. I don't they used to buy some shoes. He'd send them to the send them, send them through the school. He'd be like, damn, you get shoes delivered in the classroom. I'd be like, hey, 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 you got nothing to do with me. This is my pops. Are so, you serious? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, I gotta talk to my parents. Like I'm like, look, I'm going to let y'all know. Y'all dropped the ball on this right here. I'm going to tell you what you did wrong. You didn't send me no food for breakfast, for lunch. I'm not even going to bring up shoes. I ain't even, that might be doing too much. But my, like, my schools were up the street from my house. I was like 10 minutes away. Oh, yeah, we were nowhere near the house. No, I I never, I never went to schools in the same district, in the right district. That's okay. It happens like that. We're not snitching and we don't judge. I know, I'm not tripping. It, it's over with. They can't get me now. No, I'm just saying, like, sometimes some other schools be outside your district. And you'd be like, look, the education is what is important. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the other but, thing, the last thing, I know this is my last thing, high school. My mom used to drop the car off up there. I ain't have a car in school. So she used to just drop the car off. And she had said, like, hey, I left, the, I left the car in the back of the school, the key up under the seat. I can leave with the, the car riders, the, the car drivers. You know, Yo. that that day you get to the parking lot with the cars and the skin the, the cleat because I'm a bus no. rider typically. Like, oh Jason, I'm not gonna lie. My mom would let me like I was think I was a uh, senior in high school and she'd be like, I'd be like, Can I drive today? She'd be like, Yeah, Jazz, you can drive. I'm not on the bus today. Late, Listen. I'm late. I'm late. I'm leaving. We'll get something to eat. I'm coming back. Man, I used to just walk around. Leave when I want to. I ain't got to go catch no bus. And one of my homegirls lived up the street from me. She was like, Jazz, can you take me home? Come on, bitch, get the car. We about to go to Harris Teeter, act a fool, listen to Lean With It, Rock With It outside. Like, Ugh. loud. Yeah, I was one of the ones, like, we had a red light. And the song, come on, I'm putting my car in park, and we getting out, Lean With It, Rock With It. Yeah, that was... It's, that wasn't, that wasn't that wild. That wasn't that wild. But I we definitely... That was Gucci Mane era. Gucci Mane, geez, I'm, I got the Gucci Mane going. I'm out the car sitting there, chilling like, <laughs> Jason, what you doing? What you doing back here? Oh, nothing. I'm just waiting, you know. I'm just chilling. The music blasting. I fit to get in the so, car, you know. So you what? just park listening to music? Before I got in the car, I wanted people to know it was me. So windows down, music blasting. I'm just kind of sitting on the car a little bit. Oh, you sit get... like Sylvie was. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know this me, because ain't nobody else gonna get on this side. <laughs> I never sat on the hood of my car because I would unless it was clean. But if the car ain't been washed, I know it's dead bugs on my hood and they're not about to get on my clothes. <laughs> That's that fourth dog. Shit that is make, crazy. That makes sense. <laughs> but nah, that's too funny. Yeah, we was definitely stopping at the red light and dancing in the street. Ah, those were the days before people start recording everything. I'm glad we don't live in them days no more. But no, nah, I thought this scene of like Sylvie's energy towards Loki, I thought it was kind of fucked up, like a lot. Big, big time. But I get it at the same time when you feel like when you when you 
trusting of a person. And like y'all done kind of y'all intertwine. You you're me, literally. Like you should have the same, you should feel like I feel, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But are we under the impression that she thinks that he was lying the entire time? He who remains? Yeah. That she believes, in, like, because she's out here living her life, doing what she wants, that everything that he was warning them about, nothing has actually come to reality. So she's just probably like, he was lying the whole time, so I killed him because he's the one who created the TVA and why my life was shit. So I'm curious if it actually hit her of what she did and how I mean, a lot of this is that we haven't a lot of things that we haven't come to see yet is going to be her fault. <laughs> so I guess she can't blame herself yet because she hasn't seen it, the repercussions. Mm -hmm. But Loki has. Mm -hmm. Loki's been jumping in between time in the first episode. He's not anymore because they were able to fix it. But I'm, I'm like, what you apologizing for? Is, uh, that, that might be is that girl mask? Um no. Apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> apologizing, um, apologizing to make a situation better, even if you didn't do it. So no, that's that doesn't uh, all right. You know I got triggered a lot this week, so <laughs> you try to trigger me. So me, I only can speak for myself. If you didn't do anything wrong, why are you apologizing? Now, if you're only apologizing to end this conversation, then he I feel like to, you're trying he my he, intelligence. He definitely wasn't trying to end it. He was trying to start a new one. He's trying to start but, a new timeline. But I don't know why he... Does he feel like he did something wrong? I think it... I feel like it was a, a situation where he went against... Because okay, I would have to really look at episode five because I feel like that's that's where the conversation began. Because when he sat down and talked to Kang, whatever he thought he was going to do, his whole his whole process changed. She was like, wait, 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 what? Right. And she was like, nah, fuck that. We ain't changing no plan. And it's like, because he, I feel like if Sylvie saw the things that Loki saw, her entire attitude would be different. I'm ready for that episode. I'm ready for some shit to happen and for her to sit back and be like, oh, yeah, Loki, you were actually right. I shouldn't have killed him because I he was telling the truth to where she just takes accountability for all the shit that she did. Now, Sylvie doesn't seem like she would do that, but there's still hope in her character, but it's just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I understand why... I guess why he was apologizing just to make her feel like I understand why you're upset with me because you thought we was about to go in here. We were on one accord, but I was educated and my eyes were open. And then I'm like, wait a minute, we don't need to do this. We need to switch our gears. And she was still eyes closed, not listening and killed Kane. But I ain't like how she was talking to Loki. She was just like, um, you got five minutes. Like, what's up? What you need? And I'm like, what? <sighs> yeah. I mean, what you, what you, you thought it was going to be fireworks? Like they was going to kiss or something? No, I wasn't expecting any kind of romance. But Not I was... You. I don't want to see that. Mm. Not between them two. But I guess I was expecting... I mean, because at the in the post-credit in the last episode, she was over there looking at a couple like, oh, that's what I want. And you know damn well, sis, you ain't gonna get that from no connection from nobody except yourself. So you're kind of in a it's kind of one of the things where it's like you're happy to see somebody, but you can't express the excitement that you have to see them. So you do the complete opposite and be an asshole towards them. I can identify mm -hmm. it because I'm a victim of a victim. I'm guilty. I'm I'm excuse me. You was a victim. Both, both been a victim of it and guilty of it. So mm, I can see it. Mm, so, okay. No, okay. You see perfect. the signs. You see the signs. Yes, did absolutely. You see, did you see the signs of what Brad was about to tell us next? I mean, uh, no. 
No, I was so when when Morbius was just like, wait, so this is a setup for real? But I love their exchange. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie. I love their exchange because it seemed kind of pointless, but also very entertaining. Because Mobius is just like, tell me about your movie. He's like, man, you don't care about my movie. They were just having a regular conversation. And he was like, I would no, I would definitely go see. He's like, I'm not hooking you up with tickets. First Bruh. off, that's kind of fucked up. Like, give me two tickets to your movie. Like, what you mean? He was like, I remember you smacked me. I ain't forget about that. <laughs> He's like, you called me a bitch. Like, what you mean? <laughs> so, but I thought it was funny. Mobius is just like, 10 minutes ago, we were mad at each other. You telling me I'm nothing. And now we're here having a conversation like gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, nah, he had to. But uh, yeah, I like how they, you know, how they did that. He go back out, you know, pretty much tell him, hey, this, this timeline may not be here much longer. And we find out Liza, her big plan from the last episode she is bumming branches. I wonder had they been going off and they just hadn't seen it yet, or what was going like you know what was going on. Because by the time they caught it, it was just like, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm, I don't know because Brad knew what was happening or what was going to happen, and he was out here living his own life. So I think they were actually doing it for a while. It just finally got on the radar because they were destroying so many to where now the radar is able to see those uh, branches that are being destroyed. Because before it was so many. You think about how many branches there were at the beginning of this episode and then you look at how many is at the end. They killed a lot of people. Bruh, they like, they not even, they not even, well, so that was, uh, originally it was what, that was pruning the time. Well, you know what, actually they was doing the bums in the first season, right? They was doing those bums in the first season. Like whenever... Yeah. Let's say somebody went somewhere and they weren't supposed to, they'd leave the bomb, just leave back out. Yeah. But now they know it, they're not they're not cleaning it up. They're killing these people. And it was like all the new timelines. So I guess how long a timeline gotta be released before it's no longer considered new? Like mm. that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, man. That's I think the- it was doing it the entire episode though. I'm I'm not mad at that thought. That's why I was like, man, I wonder if they had been doing it like they had been doing it the entire and maybe and I feel like, what did the hit come off of the temporal pad that they got from him? Or was that just the new news we got about Renslayer? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Because I, I wonder when they when they figured out that Renslayer is working with Ms. Minutes, if that same temp pad is how they found out that they was at their bombing what well he told them they was bombing it so i you know that's where they found out but i wonder but they but they knew already b15 because she told she told mobius hey you need to get back here right now yeah maybe something that casey saw casey and ob Mm -hmm. uh saw during that time i don't know i have to look at that uh the episode again to see for sure because it was just damn and yeah. she had like all her soldiers with her and everything, and they was going quick. Bruh, just dropping them. Do, 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 do. Like, <laughs> can you imagine you in a grocery store and you see somebody just come out of a random door, drop a bomb, then leave, and you sit like, what the hell is that? And then boom, your timeline is gone. It's giving um injustice, right? And they had injustice was I feel like uh, hey, um, movie or the game, either one, like um. Uh, well, he he left a bomb in a random. He left a bomb in Metropolis and it blew up. No, that bomb was in Lois. Spoiler alert. Oh, it was in, it was inside of her. Well, no, the bomb was in Metropolis, but she had the detonator in her to where if her heart stopped, the bomb would go off. And he kind of fucked up. He made Superman indirectly kill her, which blew everything up, and his kid. That movie was so fucking good. Mm. I think he was kind of upset they didn't make the. Um, I with that with if they kept it on that type of energy, but you know the game wasn't like that. But if they would have kept it that energy. What well, when I say energy mature, it would have to be they would have to bring DC into the Mortal Kombat realm. But that's how it is though. Like if you look at the <clears throat> animated Mortal Kombat movies and DC, they're all dark. 
and they all violent as hell. Right. So I'm just thinking to myself, that is an amazing remedy for a very good animated movie. How are you saying yes to trash, but you're saying no to fire? I would have said, keep the flash. Fuck that shit. You could have saved it. I would have loved to see Mortal Kombat versus Dag on um, DC. Just DC. <laughs> like, what? It probably would have been like the game where they would have fought some kind of Shao Kahn. Uh, what's that? What's that man? Lex name? Luthor. Uh, nah. What's the, what's the dude's name? Shang Tsung. No. Quan Chi. Shinnok. No. Okay, so you you going all Mortal Kombat? Bring me back to oh. DC. The DC oh, villain. The top. The the Thanos. The guy that Thanos was created after. Dark side. Dark side. Shao okay. Kahn type of co- combination. That That's what the game so is. That's what the game dope. is. Yes, I have it. That's why I'm so pissed off where they were just like, no. I'm like, can we bully them into making this? You probably could. Maybe you we should could. start the camp. Maybe we should start the campaign. Yeah, let's on get our Twitter page. up. Let's like, just go yes. crazy. Because I'm thinking about it and I'm gonna go into um <clears throat> did you see that the um the Lovecraft Country Batman movie? What? Yeah, no. that's dark. That's dark. <laughs> that's dark. What's <laughs> now, the name that of is it? Um, I think it's called Lovecraft Country. Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm, I'll let you know, but it's okay. dark. It's definitely dark. Uh, yeah, I definitely need that for sure. But uh, timelines we we see we have Sylvie, we got Mobius, and then we have Loki, pretty much trying to stop Liza and her men. And it was good to see them fighting alongside each other. Because even Loki was just like, uh, I need to know why you're going to be at TVA in the future. She's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because our future hasn't been written yet. And I made sure of that. So she talking hot shit that she killed Kane. And I feel like she, those her words are going to come bite her in the ass later. But Or him. Both. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, if somebody was to come to you and ask you, Jason, I saw you in three years from now, you doing this. Tell me why you was doing it. What kind of answer do you <laughs> are they expecting from you? Because I'm just like, wait a minute. He, but he did give her, he gave her a solution to that question. He said, just read me and we can figure it out. And she could have did that. She didn't want to. He just wanted her to touch him. I peep game. Yeah. I That's mean, it. you know, whatever you can do. Okay, here it's called The Doom That Came to Gotham. <clears throat> yeah, it's based on it's based on Lovecraft Country though. It's not like that, but it is based on Love Is it an Country. animated movie? It is. Hmm? It's on Strange HBO, Service. It's on, it's on Max. Alright, I'm gonna check that out. I can't believe I said it. Good job. Who the hell? <laughs> See you there. <laughs> um, but, man, uh, like I said, we did we went we kind of went over it, but man, I we not that we I mean we weren't surprised that Miss Minutes was working with Renslayer, right? Yeah, no, I wasn't we, sure if she was working with Renslayer or just working for Kane. And I think it was more or oh, excuse me, for he who remains. Mm-hmm. So because when she gave her those um those files, she was like, this ain't what I asked for. And she was just like, he said you might need them. Mm. I don't know what, what those files were. It was probably him, like, taking pictures. They probably come posing. Look at you. You be making good in there? Don't nobody care. No. Not when <laughs> this was made. She wasn't in the picture. So. <laughs> I'm not hating, but. Nah, <laughs> she wasn't there. <laughs> it was just him. Um, but you got any expectations for what's what's to come or what's about to happen or what you want to happen? I mean, I hope we get Kang in the next episode. Something. I think now that we got rid of our small threat, which was Liza, Mm -hmm. because we need to figure out like where they were going. Um, but I'm curious now that we had like Sylvie has a she still has that temp pad. So, like, what is she about to do? And I think that fight that we saw in this episode is going to have her, obviously. she's. I think she's probably going to make some visits to the uh, TVA. But at this point, I I don't know. Be- I mean, they have to go find Kang. 
or some yeah. version of him because what Obi told us was with all these new branches, the temporary lube. And I probably just fucked that whole word up. What? Yeah, I, yeah, it was crazy. Saying it out loud, I was like, I said that completely wrong. But I'm not going to say it again. The TL is what I'll call it. So the TL, they can't even fix it because they can't get through the door. And they need somebody's, um, his DNA or something from him to open up the door. Mm -hmm. So now they have to go find Kang, which I think is going to show us that clip that they released earlier this year. Or it was, no, it was, um, it was the end credit to Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. well, Ant-Man had two end credits. So I think that's when we're going to see Kang. So I, I'd be, I think we're going to definitely see Kang next episode. I thought this was the episode, truthfully. I did too. When we opened it up, I was just yeah. like, oh, snap, we about to see Kang. And I'm like, oh, it's just Brad. It's Brad. Be Brad. But I think was... we'll probably see like a version of Kang helping Loki and Mobius. You think that's going to be the version we get in this? In this... I think we'll get a few. Mm. But I think we'll get one that's helpful and one that will probably kill that helpful version. So. I'm mad at that. I'm not what mad at that at all. Man, I truly don't know, man. I'm, you know, trying to see what this, this relationship is going to develop between um, Sylvie and Loki. But I do think the we're going to get a lot more development with um with Mobius and before whatever they do with him hopefully they don't kill him but I do think he's gonna die but whatever they do him and Renslayer gotta have their last standoff so we're gonna see what that that's gonna be the reunion that we I think is gonna be the one you're gonna be like whatever it is like if whether he, him be sad depressed whatever it is just like bro like you took my life my nigga like do you think he might kill her maybe a sacrificial play possibly That'll be pretty poetic because and I know I've seen online after uh, we record the first episode, a lot of people were saying how the way that Loki introduced Kang was a lot better than how Ant-Man introduced him. And they were talking about that audio of like Renslayer talking to Kang and how, because do you know like the history of the comments between in their relationship? I know that a version of him dates her. So like she was one of the one one of the people um one of them dated, but like the like true truly not I'm not wasn't that, that comic book guy. I'm gonna do some reading in my big MCU book, see if she's in there. But <laughs> I saw some stuff online where a lot of people was just like she end up dying she ends up dying mm. and of course he sees everything. So for him to find somebody that he fell in love with but already knowing is that, he, is that what he? Is that what? Well, I don't. Hmm. I don't want to make. I'm. I'm be making it up. But was there one like she died, and that's why he. That's why he began trying to figure out time anyway. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one, but that sounds like something I may have heard because it definitely could be. Uh. Like theories, but I'm not sure because I think Thanos was in love with death. Mm -hmm. yes um but could be possible and i'm curious like was janet before renslayer no janet was after renslayer or was it just two different kangs was the same kang fuck with both of them mm, that's a good question I, especially if he, he remains as dead it gotta be she gotta be dealing with a different one right or did she do you think she knew the end of time kang I don't think any of them knew the end of time or he who remains Kang. He didn't seem like he could got any hoes. <laughs> Why not? He just didn't. He just, I don't know. He just seemed like a designated driver out the group. They don't right. go into the party that just sits in the car and it's like, all right, let me read my book real quick. I ain't nothing wrong with that. You got to have it, you know. I can see it. But. Yeah, but um, 
I think it's funny. We didn't get a post credit this episode. Um, I was waiting and I was looking and I went through all the credits and I was just like, okay, there's not a post credit. But they were able to detect Renslayer's Tempad, which I'm just like, okay, we definitely got to see her and Kang in the next episode. If we don't see them, I'm going to be sick because I'm going to be like, wait a minute, y'all. Mm-hmm. I, think we'll get Ren- I think we'll get Ren- at least Renslayer. At, and at Miss minimum. Menace too. That whole all over the timeline, you on the Twitter timeline, like, sis, where you at in the show? <laughs> like, oh. She'd be calling people out where they make mistakes and what they be saying on, the, on there. She do. I follow her. And I just be like, hey, sis, I see you tweeting today. We looking for you. Your clock face ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, leave the AI alone for it. Come and get you. Take your page up off of there. Oh, that would suck. If I get hacked, you know who it was. You're going to pop on your screen. Hey, what's Yo, going on? Uh, <laughs> I would be so scared. <laughs> thought she was in the Matrix when you seen her. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, I think that's all that I had. Um, I don't think you had anything else, man. Um. I guess we speak to our people, man. We appreciate everybody who's listening, following, chatting. Um, definitely enjoying the series so far. Uh, so please like, share, subscribe. Um, all the things, all the things. We have a podcast community. Join us over there. Uh, this will be a bonus episode. You will get this as soon as I finish it. Whatever that looks like. <laughs> um, what else I was going to say? Uh, I don't know. We got something for the people, Jazz? Uh, please be sure to subscribe. We drop yes. an episode every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. This episode sh- normally would drop on Monday, but I guess whenever Jason mm-hmm. gets mm-hmm. it done, it's probably going to be Monday, so keep a lookout for it on Mondays. Um, And we're just getting prepared for our end of the month horror movie month live stream. So definitely pushing that. Definitely got a lot, got a lot planned for that. Definitely engaging. Definitely gonna be fun, man. But this is episode two, season two of Marvel's Loki. We appreciate y'all for listening. Thanks for coming. Deuces. Cheers.